Yeah. Are you parents here too? No. We have those going to the two inputs on the LEDs up there, right? Yeah. That looks perfect. Okay. Okay, so now what about the output? I expect the output to be zero as well, right? Right. So when I moved this to here, mm -hmm. I was just looking at that first inverter. Right. Okay. So, what is Jen doing? Yeah. 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 So B are the middle ones. B, 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 B. Oh, okay. B, B. One, one, one. Zero, one. Okay. One, zero, one. First. One. one. Zero, one. Okay. When you start it up, you're kind of turning this wheel before this wheel, which is why it works, but that still looks fine. So now the next thing you need to do is you need to add the code to basically that final state to kick. You kind of detect when it's now, so they can do the stop. Come on. Are you doing that? That was mildly exciting. This is wonderful. Dude, it works. It makes a thing. <laughs> it got full on. That was a straight target. That was beautiful. just a little bit easier. So our group project was the smart grid. What the smart grid does is it allows power to be used where it's needed while taking away power where it's not needed. So this is our Internet of Things earthquake detecting device. So we made an early detection warning system specifically for flash floods. The input device of the step up step counter has an accelerometer in it which basically just measures the movement and physical activity while the force sensor which is located in my shoe measures the pressure I put on the sensor and thus the number of steps I take. Our Internet of Things device is a wildlife tracker. We created the BabyFit, a wearable health monitor for babies that measures temperature, motion, and heartbeat. 